this is my barn door tracker. As you can see, the tripod I've been using is an Amazon special. It's the uh, cheapest thing you can buy on Amazon, and it's not a very good tripod. It's very, very wobbly, very unstable. Um, you can see the, the twisting action isn't terribly good. Uh, this is what I've purchased to replace it. It's uh, incredibly sturdy, costs quite a bit more, and uh, it's going to work out better for us in the long run. Uh, one of the problems we have with it is that there is no opportunity to set the angle um, of the uh, of the tracker on top of that tripod. There's no ball mount or any any kind of uh, even a cheap uh, camera camera mount. So just a just a threaded base. So the idea here is we're going to use a a garage door hinge. This is hinge number one. Apparently, learned that it's a pretty simple thing. It's two pieces of stamp sheet metal with a sort of a pivot point in the middle. It's kind of got a tube that I'm able to get a bolt through. So I'm going to end up here cutting the, the tube out of the middle of that. My initial thought was to um, put a bolt through that tube and, and tighten it up, and I kind of knew that wasn't going to work, but I, I figured I'd give it a try anyway, and, and of course it didn't. And uh, here we're going to go ahead and, and cut both ends off that tube. My, my thinking here is we're going to use the ends of the tube that the bolt fits through as uh, spacers or washers to um, to allow that, that bolt to still utilize the same holes and, and, and fit the way it's supposed to fit and then then tighten the two together and uh, uh, allow it to you know hold its position. So my original thought here was to use a, a wing nut on this bolt and, and tighten the two pieces together and, and you can see I, I tightened it about as tight as I could reasonably do with you know my fingers and it, it didn't really um, stop the motion of the, of the hinge. It didn't really lock it in place the way I thought. So my, my next thought is to put something in the middle so that it has something to kind of squeeze against. And, and I kind of figured I had to do something like this originally. So I'm, I've got a piece of uh, just half inch conduit, um, electro conduit that uh, I'm going to put in the middle between the the pieces of, of the, the one side of hinge that's on the inside there. Um, it kind of slides right in there. It's, it's not not super complicated here. I'm still using the spacers uh, on the inside of the, on the holes, so it's all kind of sandwiched together. And this kind of works. It doesn't really work as well as I would have liked it to. Um, it definitely applies some pressure and, and, and more or less uh, um, Tightens the tolerances up and allows it to, to pivot nicely, but not uh, not be super loose and, and flopping around. Um, a couple of taps there with the hammer makes it all a little tight. There was a lot of a lot of gap between the, the two pieces of the hinge. Um, a lot of play back and forth, probably a, a millimeter or so of play. And here I am adjusting the uh, shape of the one side of hinge because I'm kind of making a, a little bit of a of a you know screw gear to used to open and close it uh, with a little more uh, precision than just trying to manually slide it up and down. It's just a piece of quarter inch threaded rod. You could certainly use, you know, six or eight millimeter would work uh, equally well. Nothing uh, particularly precise about this or, or not going to be motor driven or anything like that. Um, I have a problem here with my uh, my tracker is that the electronics box is, is completely in the way of where I want to put this. So I, I just take it off and decide I'll, I'll deal with it in a little bit. That'll be another another project for the future. And uh, Here I am, I've attached the one side of the hinge to the bottom of the tracker. It's a little hard to see, but I'm, I'm reattaching the electronics box just to one, one point so it's not flopping around all over the place while I continue to work on this and, and test it. And now I'm not really sure what to do because I'm not I'm not entirely sure how to hold the uh, how to hold that bottom nut down. Here I am thinking about it. Then the idea comes to me, and I get to go to my uh, favorite place on earth. It's my my happy place. It's a hardware store, neighborhood hardware store that still has nuts and bolts and bins that you can just grab a handful of and and uh, stick them in a little plastic baggie, and take them home. Um, you can get to write the quantities and prices on the bag, and they trust you. It's very nice. Um, so I ended up getting a couple different uh, things here, but I'm going to try these these wing nuts, these quarter-inch wing nuts, and 
So this is a little sketchy uh, drilling operation coming up here. Don't don't try this at home. It's not really I did the best I could to hold it safe, but it's still a little a little sketchy. And luckily everything worked out. The uh, the the thread on the top of the tripod here is a three eighths, and the the holes were all quarter inch. So I had to make that just a little bit bigger so that that will simply go on there and just uh, putting a simple nut, tightening it up, and that's uh, that's how it's going to get held onto the onto the tripod. And then here I am going to reassemble the whole hinge mechanism, and and I've I've abandoned the wing nut at this point. I'm just going to kind of double nut the um, with a lot, you know, lock two nuts together to hold the hinge and give it a little bit of tension and, and just the right amount of tension. Maybe adjust that a little more. And here I'm just cutting the uh, cutting thread rod to length. Um, got lucky that they didn't mess up the threads and. I didn't have to, you know, file the the, the threads you know, safe or flat. And here you can see what's what's going on with that that wing nut kind of upside down, where it's the little leg of the wing nut's locked in that slot in the in the bottom part of the hinge. It's working out really well. And I decide I'm going to use a, a wing nut on the top and a wing nut on the bottom um, with a with a little spacer tube to lock the whole thing into position. That's really going to make this a solid mount. It's not going to move at all. So instead of so I'm trying to pinch the the hinge together to lock it in place. I'm going to use that uh, same thread that um, a piece of thread or rod or all thread um, to, to hold it all, all into place that I, I used to mo move it up and down. Now what I've done is I cut one of the wings off of that that wing nut so that it's uh, it sits a little farther down in that slot and there's not a, a, a wing sticking off the top because it didn't really work very well and then I think you can see here it works pretty well at this point in that Little tube gets the bottom wing nut um, down far enough that's not they're not interfering with each other. Um, in in a, in a minute here, I'll go to the grinder and clean up the rough edges on this and and on the piece of uh, threaded rod, which, like I said, it kind of got um, lucky that that thread still works and and the hacksaw. Uh, I'm not really happy with the top uh, wing nut bobbing up and down a lot here. It's binding up. You can see when I'm going going away, and I'm not really sure how to. How to hold this to drive it? Um, I tried a couple different things, and um, what I what I end up on here next is just a piece of a uh, uh, it's a coupler, quarter inch uh, threaded coupler, uh, basically a really tall nut that I'm going to use. I'm going to stick it in the middle here, um, just so that it's a kind of convenient place to to grab and turn it to adjust it. And it's not something that really gets adjusted much. It's part of the setup, and you know it's not going to be terribly accurate but then again how how accurate a polar alignment do i need it's a it's a barn door tracker it's you know it needs to be accurate and give me you know 30 30 seconds individual frames would be perfect um, so i'm not needing to track with a high degree of precision so my polar uh, alignment doesn't have to be perfect it's got to be kind of close and this will get us there will be a little bit easier to to deal with in the the crummy uh, camera mount that was on the top of that old Amazon tripod. And uh, here I am, safety first. Um, just uh, holding that wing nut in a pair of vice grips and I'm cleaning up the bottom of the threads just to get that burr off of the bottom and see it still works. So I decided to go with this. That's a, uh, a cage nut or uh, actually a. Uh, um, I guess a nut that you screw onto a weld on, weld nut really is what it is, a weld onto another piece of metal, but it's kind of thin and it goes right up the center of that wing nut very well. Uh, that'll keep that wing nut from flying off the top when I'm opening and closing it and, and uh, also give it something to pull against if you're, if you're moving it down. So kind of final assembly here, I'm going to put those two nuts, and I guess I probably don't need both nuts at the top, but uh, it's kind of the way I put it together. and. Now this this coupler is kind of odd in that it's it's not uh, 7 16 it's only 3 8 so I had to grab another wrench and to kind of jam these all together. So all three of these nuts are jammed on there pretty tight so they're they don't move when it threads up and down and here you can see how that uh, cleaned up wing nut sits in there and we'll do a final assembly here on the bottom with my, my tube and the bottom wing nut. And honestly, it's uh, you know, 
doesn't work very well pulling the, the mount down. I guess I could loosen that hinge up a little bit, but it does a really good job pushing up. And kind of here's a final test of how it might be used in the field or I'm using my, my phone to uh, display the angle and tip it up to the desired angle. And when I get there, lock it in place.